Lately, I've fallen down the 3D printing rabbit hole, and I've become just obsessed with making stamps for leather work, of course. Bamboo Lab sent me their A1 Mini to play with, as well as a bunch of filament, so today we're going to be testing all those out and seeing just how precisely we can get our 3D printing for the use of stamping logos and images into leather. Now the A1 Mini is great because it is small and lucky for us most of these 3D printed stamps are actually going to be relatively small so you do not need a big 3D printer. The machine calibrates automatically and is a breeze to use which is great because I want to focus on the leather work and not on the technical aspects of setting up the machine every time I need a small print. Let me first introduce you to the four filament types that we'll be testing today. PLA Basic is by far my favorite filament for many reasons. It's biodegradable, incredibly easy to print with, I've never had issues with consistency or any printing errors, and it comes in a huge variety of colors and sizes, and you should be able to find PLA Basic PLA pretty much anywhere. PLA CF has added carbon fibers in the filament, giving the final stamp more rigidity and strength, Though it will also be more brittle, so if you are going to be dropping it, which I hope you don't, that could be an issue, but in our case, it really shouldn't matter. It also has a very nice look and feel to it, especially in the layering, though again, layering is not going to be an issue for us because we're going to be using the top and bottom parts of the stamps only. The bottom will be in contact with the press and the top with the leather, so layering is not an issue for us. PETG is a great middle ground filament providing tons of strength at the expense of being a bit more capricious to work with, and it is the one which I've had the most issues with getting a final, perfect final surface, so you may need to retouch any stamps made of PETG with a piece of sandpaper, which is fine. Uh, yeah, it's just a bit of extra work. And lastly, PETG CF is the same as PETG, but with added carbon fibers, CF. PETG CF is like PETG, but again, stronger than its basic counterpart. The added carbon fibers also soften up the slightly glossy, plasticky look of the PTG. Though again, this is not really something that I would be worried about because if you don't get a perfect surface, you can just sand it down very slightly on some very high grit sandpaper and get a very gorgeous finish for your final print. So on paper, and on paper alone, PLA might seem to be the least interesting because it's the least strong of these four filaments. But there is one reason why despite all this, PLA Basic might just be the best choice for printing on leather. This is the only of our four filaments which is compatible with an 0.2 millimeter nozzle, allowing us to print even finer details, and you'll see why this is important later. Now, don't get me wrong, most machines come with an 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which is the stock nozzle on this one as well, and that is absolutely fine for most things, but if you're going to be doing stamps with very fine details or small letters, then the 0.2 nozzle really does stand out. One cool thing about the A1 Mini is that changing nozzles is a breeze. It takes uh, apparently less than 30 seconds with one hand, it takes me about a minute with two hands, but it's still really easy to change out from the 0.4 to the 0.2. And if you're making bigger prints, why not even consider an 0.6 millimeter nozzle, which will enable you to gain a lot of time. With that being said, let's go ahead and print out a bunch of stamps and print on leather and see how they do. For my testing, I'm using vegetable tanned leather, which I will be wetting fully to ensure a proper imprint. If you're gonna be doing this, simply dunk your leather piece fully into water, wait for those bubbles to stop coming out and let the leather piece sit for a while to allow for the moisture to properly spread throughout your piece. This will help you get a better, clearer print with less force being applied onto the stamp. While it is possible to use your stamps on dry leather, you will need more force in the stamp to get a clear imprint, and if your stamp has very fine details like teeny tiny walls around it, it could actually tear up or even cut through the leather. Make sure your stamp is perfectly lined up in the middle of the press so that you're distributing the force evenly throughout the piece. If you're worried about getting an uneven print, you could opt to print a larger base on the stamp to be certain that all that force is spread nice and neatly around your stamp. As they come out of the press, the initial tests are looking really promising, and I'm surprised how little force is needed to get a clear imprint. Bear in mind, I'm using a 1.2mm thick leather, which is relatively thin for most people's standards, 
And this is already going to be giving me a great imprint, but also limiting me in just how deep I can get that print and maybe just how qualitative my details are. So if I can get a good print on 1.2 millimeter thick leather, I am certain that any thicker leather will also give me a really, really nice print. I'm already tremendously impressed with how detailed these stamps are with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and I am just blown away by the quality of the stamps and the quality of the detail that I'm getting from the stamps made with the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. Again, this is only possible with the PLA Basic. After giving the leather some time to dry, here are the results. Starting from my least favorite, which is PETG. While it is accurate and delivers strong results out of the box, being the hardest also shows the most nozzle marks. This can be corrected, as I mentioned, with a very light sanding on some sandpaper, uh, taking away that top layer grain and you'll be absolutely fine. But it does mean extra work, so if you're trying to go fast or have a lot of different stamps to make, or just, just don't like the idea of sanding, then this may not be for you. In third place, we have PLACF. As it does not print with the 0.2mm nozzle, while it's easy and reliable to print with, the extra durability of the carbon fibers really does not mean much for us in this test. For many different applications, this is a great filament to have, but when printing stamps onto leather, I just don't see the point of upgrading to the CF filament. The runner up in my selection is PETG CF. PETG CF is slightly cleaner looking than PETG, but only marginally, so it should produce a slightly cleaner result. I do appreciate that the added carbon fibers give it extra strength, so in theory it will last much longer, especially if you're going to be using the same stamp repeatedly or need a lot of force applied into your stamp. But for today's grand winner, I nominate the humble PLA Basic. This filament actually comes with a huge punch, especially when printing on wet vegetable tanned leather. So durability is not something I would be concerned about, especially following my tests where I've gone ahead and crushed one or two just to see what would happen and it's held out much better than I would have thought. Now, yes, you can crush it, that's for certain, but you generally don't need to if you're casing or wetting your leather properly beforehand. Since it's the only one capable to print with the 0.2mm nozzle, you'll be able to get absolutely astonishing and crisp details in your print. It's also incredibly reliable to print with at lower temperatures than other filaments in my list. It lasts much longer in storage without deteriorating and is also one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest of the bunch. So what's not to love? Now that we have our champion, let's go ahead and make a real stamp that will test the boundaries of PLA Basic with the 0.2mm nozzle, uh, making a stamp that I know that I will be using. First, grab a vectorized version of your logo. In this case, I'm using a logo from my brother-in-law's brewery in Dijon here in France. Tinkercad is a free and very easy to use online 3D modeling software, which allows me to create a 3D shape from the vectorized file resize it to fit my needs and create a base plate for it onto which it will be mounted so that I can then use it in my press. I find that a 2mm base plate with the stamp rising a further 2mm on top of it gives me a clean result while not using up too much material in the printer. I chose this logo not just because it's a cool plug for someone I like and especially a great startup with amazing quality beers, but also because it allows us to test tiny details in the sun star streaks or the bear's head and eyes, as well as looking at how embossing and debossing work all in one go. Once satisfied with the design, make sure to flip the image since you'll be using it as a stamp and then export the STL file. Bamboo Studio is the app that allows you to slice your 3D creations into the layers that the printer can then understand and reproduce. For this final proof of concept, I am going to go overboard and print it all with the most accurate settings possible, even if it is clearly overkill, since layering size in 3D prints simply just do not matter, but I'm still just curious to see how detailed my overall print can be. We'll set the nozzle size to 0.2mm, adjust my layering to the completely unnecessarily detailed 0.06mm height, and make sure that I'm using 100% infill to give the base as much strength as possible, though again, this is probably just complete overkill. What I'm curious about here is to see just how much detail is kept or lost once we hit the slice button. And there you have it. The app will show you each and every stroke that the nozzle will make while printing. And as expected, 
There is some detail loss in the points of the star, but overall, most of the details are still here. I've sent the final form off to print, and while it's printing, I want to give you a few quick reasons why the A1 Mini for me from Bamboo Lab is a really interesting choice. The first reason is that all the calibration is done automatically, whether it be bed leveling or extrusion flow. I don't have to check anything before a print is done, which means that it's a hands-off approach that I absolutely love. The second reason is that it is actually quite small with a relatively small footprint in the house, which is probably the only reason why my wife is letting me store it in our small Parisian apartment. And finally, and possibly most importantly for a lot of you, it is cheap. All of this comes in a package which is actually highly affordable and at the lower end of the spectrum when looking into uh, entry-level 3D printing, while providing a huge bang for your buck. I do have more interesting ideas that I want to do with this machine and leather, so if you're curious to see that, this is a great moment to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for some more fun projects. Inspecting the stamp, the first thing that I notice is just how clean the overall result is. Letters and small details are mostly all there. While the bear's head is neat, we do indeed lose some detail in the sun stars, but this is all something that we predicted and saw when we were slicing up the project in Bamboo Studio. Once printed onto the leather, the results are absolutely as expected. Both the embossed and debossed portions come out nicely, the fine details are clear, and just as importantly, the stamp has held up great to the 1.5 ton press. If I had to choose between just two filaments, I think the two that I'd recommend for most crafters to be out there if you're looking to print stamps for leather work are PLA Basic and PETGCF. PLA Basic, being the only one recommended for use on an 0.2mm nozzle, is the clear winner for making stamps for leather work, as you'll be able to get those very, very fine details that you might be looking for in stamps using, as I mentioned, finer details or text. PETGCF, well, basically here, you're going to be sacrificing that precision for flexibility in the sense that it will be much stronger than anything else out there and much more long-lasting. So if you're going to be putting your projects through a bigger press, or maybe you need your stamp just to last a very long time, then PETGCF might be the one for you if you don't need those details. Yeah. But whichever filament you decide to go for, I think that the champion of this video is, of course, the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini for its small size, ease of use, and reliability. Since getting this printer, I have been blown away by just how much I can do with it, all the possibilities that are available. And as I mentioned, I've got some really cool, interesting ideas to make with that printer for leather work coming very soon. So again, make sure you stay tuned for that. And again, hit that subscribe button to stay updated. So do let me know in the comments below if this video has helped you on your path to 3D printing, especially stamps for leather work. I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something and I hope to see you very soon for some more crafting. Mm -hmm.